Hey there, everybody. I wanted to make an interview with my hubby, Joey, and kind of get a perspective for him from his view, how it was like for him um, dating an ex J Dub, now getting married to an ex J Dub, marrying someone who has children, which to me, my children are so precious. I love them. I do not ever think it's a burden, but I do recognize that it is difficult sometimes, or I think it is difficult um, to uh, find somebody who will be accepting and loving and also good to them. And here's what I got to say. My mom did a really good thing because it was a little bit of a hang up for me because I thought, how, like, how am I going to get divorced and go through all that? and have to like accept that I'm just going to be single for the rest of my life now. I really felt like that. My mom showed me this show um, from Europe and it is actually a true story. The author writes about himself and how he met this lady and that was the first lady he truly fell in love with. And he didn't know at first that she had kids and she said oh man I have to really tell him that I have three children how am I gonna do that and she comes up with this plan and she says come to my house I have a birthday party for my kid and he was like okay so he shows up and it's a jam-packed house tons of kids there and she says these are my kids and he goes all of them and she goes, no, just three. And he goes, oh, I'm glad, just three. And it was so funny because this is a true story. The author, he wrote his real life story. He married her and he was a bachelor driving a Porsche and just having like the hottest girlfriends in town on his arm all the time. And when he met this lady with the kids, he became a total family man. He loved the kids. They loved him. And I'm so glad my mom watched that with me because I really do think it gave me hope. I thought, you know what? I need to not think the way I do because there is going to be a guy who will love all of us, just like the author did. And I really do think they exist. Well, I see it. It exists because Joey is so good to me and he is so good to the kids. I mean, you'll hear in the interview that it wasn't always easy for him because he was a bachelor moving in, but he was always so kind and patient. And not only does he care for them, they really do care for him. It's a beautiful thing. I'm I'm so touched and I feel so lucky and happy. Unicorns do exist. So here's the interview. Enjoy. I think it's really important for people to hear what it's like for someone, like the other perspective, how it is for you to have dated someone who left a cult. You know what I mean? Like, that's important because nobody talks about that. I don't, I don't think it's really any different <laughs> from dating. <laughs> I mean, it's, everybody comes with baggage and hang-ups. And, you know. The only thing that, that I can say is that I notice right away that you believe that it's going to be a big thing, right? That it's like a big thing for you. To me, it doesn't appear that it's going to be a big thing. But... I can kind of relate to that because it's the same way for me coming from a perspective of like oh, trying to be in recovery and thinking that this is going to be harder for me than it is going to be for other people. And I kind of been continuously proven wrong though. Like it's the same way when I took the job, current job that I have. I thought I had the same kind of attitude. It was like, this seems hard and it's going to be maybe too hard for me. And I got, there's too much, too many things about me that will make it so that I can't do this job well. And now I really feel like I'm the best at it in just a couple short years. 
I'm not, I actually, actually probably don't know the most about it, but I feel like in some aspects, I'm the best at it. You know what I mean? Which would have blown my mind like two years ago to really believe that. It's the same kind of way with, with dating. It's just that we believe these things about ourselves. Like I'm a ex J dub. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm weird. I'm like, I don't have experience. Like nobody has, ex- nobody has experience when they first start dating. Uh, so you yeah, it's this belief that other people is somehow it just comes naturally to them or it's easier for them. And I don't know, the more you talk to people, the more you realize that's not true. Like everyone's struggles. <laughs> But I didn't think, like, you're super weirdo. The only thing I thought about you is, like, oh, she doesn't swear. (laughs) I'm like, but I'll probably only really notice that because I swear all the time. (laughs) So I'm thinking, damn it. And I would cringe when you would swear. Man. Oh, the sailor. I'm like, this is kind of awesome. It's just a church girl that doesn't go to church anymore. It's, like, exactly what I need. (laughs) <laughs> just so what I can bring home to my parents. Well, like being in recovery, I can't be around. It's not really that. I can't. I just can't be. Couldn't. Can't be with somebody that wants to go out, get plastered every night. So. Well, some, that's why you plus were. Plus, you're grounded. It's not just the, that thing. It's like you're. You're grounded. You know, you're not like wild. A little bit. I just kind of need that in my life. <laughs> you're wild in good ways, though. You're wild in, like, a, you need to express yourself all the time, but not in, like, a unstable, <laughs> uh, I don't know, personality way. I used to say, I'm spiritual but wild. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't think I was weird? I mean, not... I don't know what I thought. I don't think so because mainly I was worried about <laughs> my your impression of me. Oh, you know? that you were weird. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you weren't. Yeah, but I'm always thinking that. Like, oh, am I being? It's not that I think I'm weird. I'm thinking, am I being weird? <laughs> Is this weird? What did I tell you right away that I had kids? Did I tell? Did I put it on my like dating profile already? I think I did, didn't I? I think you did. Yeah. What do you think of that? It doesn't really bother me because um, till you live with them. Well, yeah, <laughs> they're. It's not that they can't bother me. Mm-hmm. It's just it wasn't like a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think the reality is you've been. I've been on so many. I, I've been on the opposite end where you're just like, okay, I want. X, Y, and Z. I know exactly what I want. And then you get all of those qualities and you meet the person. And there's zero chemistry. <laughs> and it's like, this is terrible. I was like, look, like I remember talking to somebody and I was like, man, she checks all the boxes. And I talked to her when it was a train wreck. <laughs> so at some point you just throw that strategy out the window. Like that's not going to work. If it was a matter yeah. of just ticking boxes, like, you know, that it, this would have worked if, the few times where that actually happened, that would have just worked out, but it never did. So you, you got to just meet people. Yeah. So that was my my philosophy was just like, can we just meet like and and it doesn't have to be a whole thing. Just like carve out fifteen minutes, and then if, if it turns into an hour, great. You know. Our first date was like four hours, five. Like it was really long. Yeah, but it, you set it up for coffee so that if it's terrible, you can leave immediately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we left immediately because the coffee was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> that That is one drawback of j- dating a J-dub. <laughs> is th- they will take you to a coffee bar where people actually don't drink coffee. They just get high on weird <laughs> legal substances because they don't know <laughs> I thought better. Kava is Java <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a weird place it was so weird as soon as I walked in I knew exactly what I was like oh, that's like y'all get high legal <laughs> as soon as I walked in I'm like this is a weird place yeah. it's really weird um, 
Or do you think there was anything hard with me not being like experienced in being worldly? Um, well, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't really, th- I don't think about it like that. I think the the only challenge really was when we were trying to start, when I was trying to get you to start celebrating the holidays. <laughs> it was kind of super weird for me yeah. because I kind of, it was good for me in a way because you know how we were just talking about how when you tell your story, it's cathartic for you and for the other people. Yeah. It was the same way with holidays for me because I had not been invested in them for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Away from my family for a long time. And while I still did some of them, they just kind of, you know, as you get older, Christmas loses its magic because more as you're an adult, right? really for kids so if you don't have kids around too loses this magic but it's really the connection the family that made me realize like this we did these things you know fourth of july we didn't sit around talking about i don't remember sitting around talking about um the birth of the country or anything you know? <laughs> it but it was always a time when all my family would come over this is the only time we would see each other was on birthdays and holidays, mm-hmm. the extended family. So it may, kind of made you realize, like, there, there is a s- social importance to these things. And then it does become kind of fun when there's kids around, too, to celebrate them. Yeah. You know? So it was kind of good for me. But that was the only thing that I thought was weird was you guys were like... You, you had a hard time with them at first. But that quickly went away. <laughs> <laughs> you unleashed the Christmas dragon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but wasn't it kind of nice to see, too, how excited we were the first Christmas then when we were all in? Once yeah. we got over it. Yeah. What was the first thing we did was the 4th of July, right? Was the first 4th thing. 4th of July, right. And then we did... Um, Thanksgiving after that, I think, was the next thing. That never was, like, a big deal to me. I didn't really see, like, oh, that was a a big bad thing. I, I didn't understand that one because it just didn't even seem like it's not rooted in anything, you know. It's just give things. So I think we were fine with that one. And then came Christmas. And the tree, it's just that it was really the tree part because even when I was leaving... This one elder who I really liked, he was like, oh, people, when they leave, they put a Christmas tree in their house. Like, it's so bad. Like, it's like the worst thing that you could do is have a Christmas tree. And you even worry about putting it up in the house and maybe someone happens to come by that's a j-dub and sees it through like the little glass slot in the window or so i don't know he's just always paranoid and like you know oh yeah like i want to decorate but then i was like whatever it's fine yeah i don't know that i didn't think it was weird to hold the view that they're somehow bad because it's not just j-dubs that hold the view that like these are pagan symbols like some uh just regular christians that left recognized that these symbols existed before christianity right Mm -hmm. so i I don't even know i never really thought of it as a pagan symbol I, i just remember learning about um the scandinavian countries and their like um history of using this tree but then I don't really remember about that. Anything else about that in general, but I didn't think it was weird that somebody was kind of like, oh, that's a symbol of this, because I heard that my whole life from people who left the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cross was a symbol that was used all all over the world. Yeah. Predates Christianity, right? And it was. Yeah, and some of the virgin birth. 
yeah. used in all sorts of other myths, right? And father and son and like the yeah. tr- trinity, right? The trinity teaching. So is used in... well, that wasn't strange to me that somebody thought that it was weird. Like, yeah. But to me, it, it didn't. When you grew up with it, uh, again, we weren't. Never once did my parents sit down and talk to me about what the Christmas tree meant. <laughs> right. There's a sort of, there's just a kind of a momentum to things. There, the, this is just what we do. And I'm not saying that's not great to ever sit down and talk about why we do it. But, um, it's just nostalgia, you know, where you're. You had a tree, it smelled good, you decorated it. Like, there are happy memories tied to it. Yeah. That's what's significant about it for me. It was was just kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that anymore nowadays. It doesn't mean that whatever... I think it was Germanic. It came from the Germanic tribes. Yeah. Um, and really, the Puritans, um, I think if I remember that right, the Puritans, when they came to the States, they did actually not celebrate Christmas because they wanted to get away. They felt like the the Catholics and the Lutherans were letting things, you know, they were trying to get away and start, like, pure. Mm. And they didn't do Christmas. But then it kind of swept across, and people started bringing their traditions with them when they came. And you know what? That's okay probably a good thing <laughs> mm. we villainize things that don't even matter like does anybody really care does it hurt anyway it's always my thing i think about is this hurting anybody is it yeah. hurting someone yeah well probably it's hurting the trees okay <laughs> <laughs> so t- <laughs> every year i think <laughs> trees this is this is pretty awesome but it's not awesome that we just cut down hundreds of thousands of trees and then throw them away. No, I really actually used to say that too. Like, at least we're not killing trees. So we really need to buy a fake tree this year that we get down well, from I, Honestly, my intention was just to give you a, a year with a tree just so you could have the experience. But now every year you guys are like, when are we getting the tree? I'm like, oh, holy shit. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can get a fake tree, and we'll make it smell good by putting air fresheners on it. It's just not the same, because <laughs> walking in a house, and it smells like a tree. Yeah. But I, I know like one guy, he said that he would plant the tree in the backyard for the next year. How in the world did they do that? I, I don't be- really believe that, because the tree's kind of like, I don't know. I don't, obviously, I don't have the best track record with plants. <laughs> We kill everyone. So I'm is that not, true? I'm not pret- but look at I our- feel like once you cut it down, it's you, you can't just go stick it in the ground again. I mean, I think you're I'm no expert, your but- track record with plants is just fine because everything is still lush on the porch. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and none of the leaves fell off. <laughs> they all look really, really good because they are fake. Yeah. <laughs> What did you think moving in with kids and everything was hard at first, wasn't it? Or was it not? I don't even remember. It it was really a shock to me because I had been living on my own and then I was to go live with a bunch of other people. And there's no, I think what's hard is there's no, just no alone time to decompress. But it was also made hard by me because... I was trying to renovate the house and adjust to that at the same time. Yeah. What's now looking back on it, like sometimes with these, all of these projects that I always have going on, I'll think, is this really important that I paint these chairs? Like we have chairs, they suck, but they <laughs> haven't collapsed yet. So is it really that important that I painted the chairs? But at the time, like two years ago, it felt like, it was like life or death, but I was but, doing that to myself. But you were nesting. You were like trying to make the house beautiful. Like you well, were trying to make it a home. I mean, <clears throat> you have to kind of remember too, we were living with carpet that was like a health hazard almost. <laughs> it, was, it was disgusting. And now it's so beautiful. So. But that's, but that's all like you were being caring. 
Yeah, but I, but I think I, I think it was just kind of hard because I I just remember being frustrated a lot of the time, and I think part of that frustration I was putting too much pressure on myself, plus trying to adjust to having other people around. For, for how hard it is from for you going by yourself to living with a bunch of people, I think you did like wonderfully, because. It's always a transition period, but I don't even feel like it was even... I don't even think it was a bump in the road. I think, like, the kids, they loved you right away. They would say such sweet things. So, to me, it felt a million times better than I could have ever hoped for. Yeah. Like, I just think it's really happy. Well, I think that, like, when my coworker told me, don't what you do it's kind of try and be big brother to them but don't try and be their dad that was smart yeah like, yeah so i just try to support them be there for them feed them that makes people happy <laughs> right <laughs> feed them that's actually, what my mom would actually did for me a lot of time like if i be going through something hard that's where my instinct comes from is she, she goes you know she realized there's not she, she could talk to me but there's not a whole lot she could do a lot of times, talking to me would make it worse. <laughs> yeah. So she would feed me. Yeah. She would say, what do you... Can I make you this or can I make you that? And that's still what I think of when I think of comfort food. Like, she make me a... Comfy. Bagel or soup or Aww. eggs, scrambled eggs or, you know. Something. That's so sweet. Yeah. She's a good lady. I think it's really... That is such an important thing because... When you're a kid, from the kid's perspective, you already have parents, you know? Who wants more parents, especially when they're teenagers? Because I remember when my mom got remarried, and my stepdad was not nice. But he also just kind of ignored me, and I didn't mind that. You know, I was like, this is so much better than if someone was meddling in my business, because I was like 14, 15. So I think what they need... I mean, it would have been a lot better if he would have been... A friend. <laughs> it's hard sometimes too, though, because you're naturally as an adult sometimes w- want to redirect them when they're screwing up. Like if they don't pick up after themselves, it's really yeah. difficult not to be like, "Yeah, but you should." Hey, that, that's fine because a friend would do that too. <laughs> so but, yeah, so it, it does. It is kind of awkward from that. But position, it's not anymore, you're right? Constantly trying to toe a line between do you still feel like that or was it just in the beginning i mean i still feel like that it's just not as like intense like i think i just got better at learning like now it's just kind of like a all oh, kids eye roll yeah or i tell them like it's just gets easier to know that it's not the same thing to be trying to dad them as it is to just be an adult holding another person accountable for picking up after themselves and stuff. Do you remember when the first time when we met them, the kids met you and we went to the water park and I was just a nervous wreck. I was so stressed out. I didn't really want to do it. And you said to me, it's okay because I understand that you have anxiety, but you can do it anyways. Like Mm. uh, he, like you always tell yourself, um, a little anxiety doesn't kill you. <laughs> like you can have it, and you can deal with it, right? Is am I saying it right? Mm-hmm. And then I thought, okay, you know what? That's right. Like you can be afraid and do it anyways. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. That's like a staple of therapy. But that's also just going through anxiety and knowing, coming out the other side and realizing, like, it's it's not gonna kill you. I think. When I used to have like intense bouts of anxiety, the thing that helped me the most was not actually drugs or therapy or exercise. All those things did help, right? Mm-hmm. But what really helped is coming out the other side and realize it's not going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Well, your church experience was so different than ours growing up because. I mean, for us, when it was, like, so regulated and so often and intense, kind of. And then I hear, like, you tell me about your church experience growing up. 
was a Sunday only. <laughs> Not a, like part of our life. It was just Sunday. It was, it was like Sunday for two hours. We were pretend Christians. <laughs> and then the rest of the week, my parents like don't. I don't want to get you to get the wrong impression. My parents were like the best people I ever met. They never. They weren't. They were kind to people. They gave to charity. Like they were good Christians, right? Yeah, they're real but Christians. It's in my, just yeah. that we were living in a secular life. Like for us, faith was compartmentalized. You know. Yeah, but I think that's normal. I think that's what most people do. Like you go to church on Sunday, and that's kind of. Yeah, and to some degree, they. My, I think my mom. I think what happens is they're living in a modern world where. You know, it's, take like uh, even my mom. Like she, okay, she read. She would read the newspaper all the time, mm-hmm. right? She's always learning about stuff. She would read the sports section, even if she wasn't interested in, mm-hmm. it, just so she could talk to us about it, right? Yeah. So she was always informed and smart. Always had a good vocabulary. Yeah. And so she, she would, but she was always learning about the world. You learn about the world, and this ends up conflicting with your faith. So she almost had to compartmentalize it. She recognized that this works for me. Yeah. There's I can't explain every single thing about it and why it conflicts with some of the other um, things in my life <laughs> that I'm learning. But I know that it works for me. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I think my point is that I think a lot of people now are kind of forced to compartmentalize it. Right. So they they know that in some way that they they feel that they need it, like they need a spiritual life, right? Mm-hmm. But um, so they draw the good things from it, but also realize we're not two thousand years ago anymore. Right. So that because the faith really hasn't kept up with the times, right? Yeah. There's a lot. A lot of people have argued. This is not my thoughts, but a lot of people have argued that. The problems that we're seeing now, you know, uh, are because the the faith really is lagging behind the times, right? And because we have technologically progressed so fast, yeah, right. Um, we're aware of all s- sorts of things because of science and whatever mm. that we weren't aware of two thousand years ago. But I think what some people have done instead is just compartmentalize their faith right they mm. just keep it over here in a box and it doesn't really mix with their personal life unless right. like that's kind of how i grew up but well, to me it wasn't really that important because i just never really was invested in it i didn't like it i, I just i would draw during church yeah I remember acting out a little bit in Sunday school, and that's the first time <laughs> looking back that I realized that I it did affect me, uh-huh. that I didn't like. It was my way of expressing I didn't like being here, and, and I don't think that you, I, I felt like people weren't being genuine. Because in my mind, you can't compartmentalize it. <laughs> like, it, it, to my young mind, I thought... You can't um, just ignore these bigger questions, Mm -hmm. right? So why, you know, for instance, do you believe, do you take the Bible literally? That was a big question for me. Mm -hmm. I thought, if you do, I can't accept any of this. Mm -hmm. To me, like, it's putting those questions aside, just um, saying, well, I don't know, but it's... um, it's it's an important social thing for me. My grandparents go. Uh, I like the way I feel when I go. So I'm just they not going to think about that. <laughs> I thought, uh, I don't know if that's going to work for me, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, you were PEMO already at a I, young age. Oh, I was, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, and I, I really thought that pe- I really had the feeling that people didn't believe all the things that we were being taught, mm-hmm. but that they were just faking. Right? Yeah. I had that feeling all the time mm-hmm. that they were just faking, and I didn't really understand 
at the time that there were all these other aspects to it, like social aspects. And mm-hmm. Say you're married to some guy who is really important to him to go, and you want to support him, and mm-hmm. you end up going there. Well, yeah, the other people are going to pick up on the fact that you're maybe not all that invested in it or don't believe everything. Like, right. I feel like there is a lot of people like that. Or your, your dad went, and it was the only connection to your dad, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just started. It's like to get, culture. I started to get the feeling that I, everybody in there didn't believe it. But part of that is because you're being taught things like um, uh, everybody else that doesn't believe in this the way that we believe in it is gonna is gonna burn in hell for <laughs> the rest of their lives. Or yeah, you know, I don't think. No, 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 no. Yeah, I actually this, didn't believe that. This though. can't be true. Yeah, right? <laughs> isn't that weird? Like, I would sit at the meeting, and they would—we didn't believe in hell, but like Armageddon—and I never thought that everyone would die. I just couldn't. Like to me, that didn't make sense. Why would everybody die? Like, ba- like maybe some bad people, you know, they needed to go, but not everybody. Not some. Well, rare. to me, what I heard when I said that is okay. So you're saying like everyone born in this part of the world just happens to be god just happens like this part of the world Mm -hmm. better and it was obvious to me that if i was born in a different part of the world i'd likely be in a different religion yeah and then i started if once you started to read you realize they're all telling them this right yeah they're all every religion is telling them we're the only ones (laughs) i'm like well (laughs) Man, you guys are real lucky. I did think that. I was like, I am so lucky because we are such a small group and I hit the jackpot that I was born into. This is what I thought. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I just I, I did, and then it blew my mind that n- nobody else seemed to realize this. And then, I, But that's why I think I got led to the conclusion that everybody was faking because I, I, I really just could not believe that the rest of the people didn't realize these things too and just were kind of yeah. going along to get along or like either they were doing it because um but there's like a social requirement on doing it or like george carlin says uh or said <laughs> most people believe just in case you just know? in case yeah it's true and i always hated that because i thought well, you think God doesn't know the difference? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no kidding, right? Like, uh, if like, he can read hearts, he can read hearts that you were... Yeah. Just in case. I've heard people say that, actually. Right. But it's just... It's kind of amazing, because I thought about this the other day. One of the biggest things that prevents the J-dubs from leaving is because they don't know where to go. And the the J Dub organization they have it like glued together that you cannot worship God without their religion. They have it glued together. So I feel like what a cult does is spoon feed you little things that you keep accepting over the years and it's just so in you. So at first I couldn't even fathom because I really still had faith. Yeah. So I'm like, so what is gonna happen now? Because I'm gonna leave, but I can't like believe in God and not do anything about it. Is what I thought, and then I thought we're always taught that we need our instruction and spiritual guidance, and who's gonna give it to us? Well, if you're a believer in the Bible, then there it is. Like, why do you have to have someone else explain it to you? You know, if you want to take the good from the Bible, like how you say, like, um, it's kind of like the a fable like a, a good fable that you can learn from yeah I, well i think that's partly how the protestants end up one reason they end up splitting from the catholics right is that well they were they were selling <laughs> they were selling tickets to heaven right yeah but also because they're one you know the catholics are basically saying you, you can't get to god except th- via the priest right right and uh, people started to question that. And yet it was like, actually there's one lady I knew she became a Jehovah's witness because her husband died. And the priest said to her, they were Catholic. And he said, your husband is with one, like he's in purgatory, but with one leg, he's in heaven. So you can pay the rest for him to get to heaven all the way. Right. And 
she was like, you liar. He only had one leg. <laughs> True story. Wow. <laughs> She's like, this guy tells me one leg in heaven and one leg <laughs> still in purgatory. And really, like what I'm hearing too is all of the labels, all of the names, all of the categories don't really matter because we're all connected. And the path that really matters is love and kindness. Yeah, so I think it's interesting because in that light, a whole bunch of other stuff started to make sense. Yeah. We're, not, we're not like historians. You I love history. You can't like be putting this on the internet like we're like, <laughs> like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> It's just the comment. It's not like I studied this stuff. Because it's happened to read <laughs> it's some It's philosophy. Books. Yeah, yeah. But just like... I just like talking about it. I think it's important. But I think it's also really good to have conversations and let people be. You know, like, we're... Especially as J-Dub's always trying to convert everyone to the way we believe. And it is, we, it, we, I just think it's like such a beautiful thing to accept. And let people be what they want to be. And, and and really just... Like, I'm kind of annoyed now when people try to get me to come to their ch- church and stuff. Because they feel like my life... Like, I have to... I, they, they kind of act like I can't be happy without going to church, really. And I see the value in community. Yeah. And I see that it's important to people. But- well, I think what's annoying... The annoying about it is they get their brainwashed that their way is the only way and everyone else is going to suffer right? yeah because they're they're not a part of the one true faith right right and it's just uh that's that's what i think is kind of cool about the the idea that we could view these faces all pointing towards the same thing is that you don't get that you start to let everyone take their own path because you realize that there's a million different paths yeah. to the same place. But And wasn't it kinda cool how my stepmom went to the X J dub meetup, even though she she's a J dub and she just accepts like that that's who she is and everybody else is different and they're different because of their experience. Like let bygones be bygones. Mm-hmm. I think there's beauty in accepting people how they are and really to me it's like where where do we go who's gonna guide us let love guide you let just just let love guide you be kind do good things for others right so the um the other reason i like talking about this is because i had a really hard time with with mental health and a whole range of stuff Mm -hmm. I was just having a hard time in general. And so I was looking for a way out of that. How how can I fix this, right? And so I saw what really happened is that a door that was closed to me, which is my faith that I grew up with, got reopened by someone, right? Yeah. And I thought, wow. It's important. They're going to invite you on TED Talks. Yeah. TED Talks Mm. with Joey. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But isn't it kind of like powerful to share though, like your experiences? Yeah. I just go back, went back to the nuts and bolts in my life with which was connection to people. That's what my mom told me that I needed to do was get connected to people who were feeling the same way. And do that. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah. Medication. She'd been telling me this shit for years. <laughs> yeah. Those are the things that started to make me feel better. And the thing that touched me was the original path that was presented to me, which was yeah. love, right? Yeah. So it was just a connection. Uh, those, that thing is what kind of brought me back from the brink. And that's what I think is important about relationships, too, because they're like, when you meet somebody that you just click with, it is kind of a spiritual experience because you can't really explain it because everything just works in a way that it didn't work with somebody, with anyone else. No one. Right. It's just organic. 
Yeah. And there's kind of is a sense in a way that you're out of the way. And then this now this other thing is just taking over. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. But we knew, even when we met and we would talk and everything, it was like, it, we, it felt like I knew you for so long, but I really did know that I loved you right away, too. Yeah. You know, it was not because it felt, felt normal. Na- it felt like just natural. It's still like that. Hmm. Three years later. Like, I felt like, I don't know who I was for a long time, but I didn't feel like I was me. And then I started to feel like I was me again. Authentic self again. Which I think in a way is the person you were when you were a little kid before all this trauma happened to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you said when we met. You said, um, I feel like a kid again. Like, I feel like when I was a kid. It's true. Because when you meet the right person... They allow you to be your authentic self. Like, you don't have to pretend. Yeah, you you know it's love when you can be weird with each other. Yeah. But what that really means is when you can just be yourself. Right, you don't gotta... Because like, isn't really everybody weird? And, like, they just hide it. Yeah. Exactly. But when you meet somebody where you don't have to hide it, that's special. Because I bet your last that job that you were hooked up to you had to hide the weirdness or else (laughs) the monster would come out so that was the interview with my hubby I want to thank him so much for doing it it's really not his thing but we ended up chatting and taping for over two hours I had to really really cut this interview down it was so long plus we get on tangents and then we start being kind of goofy and nobody wants to hear that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I just am really appreciative because he knows it means a lot to me to share it with people because I really hope that I can inspire others with this story. That is the whole reason I'm telling it. We can leave the J-dubs and we can live um, a good life, a happy life. And if we feel like there's certain things that affected us, that's okay because the right person will love you and not even see that. And I do feel like how I grew up did affect me, but it doesn't ma- mean that there isn't the right person out there for me. So I think a lot has to do too with not being judgmental, but just being open and accepting of how people are and just always be kind help others, try to do what's good. I don't think you can go wrong with that. If you guys have any questions for Joey or for me or for the kids, for anybody in the family, please write them in the comments. I will try to address them. I have many more stories to tell. So hit like, subscribe, hold on tight. The JW Tales, they are hardly over. Have a good night. Thank you.